So let's yeah. jump in now to wide receiver waiver wire. Waiver wire. And uh, let's start off by talking about Cardinals wide receiver Rondale what? Moore, what? and who might be an interesting pickup with all these big names who are on by Stefan Diggs, Cooper Cup, Justin Jefferson, AJ Brown, Gabe Davis, Devonta Smith, and Adam Thielen. They're all on by, so Rondale Moore might look a bit more appealing. Right. So you've got all those all those huge names and no Marquise Brown this week, who. By the way, the best, the fifth best wide receiver in fantasy so far this year, seventh on a points per game basis. So a lot of, you know, there's like something like eight top 25 fantasy wide receivers out this week. It is by Mageddon here in week number seven. And so I, I'll just mention Darnell Mooney, who has put back to back useful games together for a Bears offense that's starting to, you know, look a little bit better. You know, he had 12 targets last week. So it feels like starting to get worth seeing if he's out there in your league. He's just a right around. We try to do it over 50% available in Yahoo leagues. He's right around that, that scenario. If Darnell Mooney is out there based on the talent and the recent volume that he's getting, he's probably your most likely guy uh, to pick up this week as the, uh, the Bears are at New England on Monday night. If he's out, if he's not there. Rondell Moore, who you just mentioned, back-to-back -back games with six or more receptions, 23 targets in three games this season. He had 10 last week. He's basically taking the role that the human Dorch, Greg Dorch, had earlier in the season. And now with Marquise Brown um, and all of his targets, massive amount of targets, as, as you referenced, the seventh most targets among all wide receivers, Marquise Brown, that needs to be re reallocated for somewhere. Rondell Moore is somebody they are really excited about. They talked about it. Uh, in the offseason, Kingsbury mentioned they want to get him more involved this year. Second year in the NFL for Rondell Moore, who played 99% of the offensive snaps last week. Arizona, of course, at home to New Orleans on Thursday night. I think Moore is absolutely a must-add. We've been talking about him, I feel like, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, we have. And DeAndre Hopkins last year, he did not have more. He didn't get to 90 receiving yards once. He didn't have more than seven receptions in a game once. Like you think of DeAndre Hopkins and you think of, you know, the superstar with Deshaun Watson, but he's not that guy anymore. And unless he shows that last year he's carrying something and now he's all better, I wouldn't be trusting him in this offense necessarily. He, last Down the stretch last year, DeAndre Hopkins wasn't a volume guy, which is what he was in Houston. It's what he was the first, uh, you know, when he first initially got to Arizona. Last year down the stretch, he was basically touchdown dependent. Now, he's still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. He was, they still scored at a high rate. He caught a lot of touchdowns, yep. so you didn't notice. But the fact of the matter is, is the efficiency wasn't there. The volume wasn't there. I, I think, it, it, I don't think you could get a line on this or get a bet down, but, I, like, if who leads the Cardinals in targets over the next six weeks, Rondell Moore or DeAndre Hopkins? My guess is Hopkins would be the favorite, and I would take the Rondell Moore bet in a heartbeat. It's a very niche Matthew Berry kind of bet. I like it. Don't mind it. Maybe BetMGM can price it up for us. Yeah. I do think it's also – I would also make a bet that – probably at the odds given that Rondale Moore is the wide receiver one rest of season for the Cardinals over DeAndre Hopkins uh, because Marquise Brown is going to be out those six weeks. Just quickly before we move on, with Darnell Mooney, harkening back to that, the first two weeks he was completely anonymous. He was basically Albert O last night when right, Albert right. O didn't play. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he did nothing, but those games in a monsoon against San Francisco, against the Packers where Justin Fields had 11 pass attempts. So I do think that the past four weeks are more indicative and he's basically produced at that wide receiver 30 type of level where he was drafted. But let's jump into uh, Giants receiver Wondell Robinson who suddenly is looking like wide receiver one for the Giants. Yeah, we talked about Wondell Robinson in the preseason. He made my preseason love list. Uh, Peter King came on the Roto World Draft Guide show. And, we, you know, Peter King, of course, the, the great NFL reporter for us here at, sports, uh, at NBC, formerly from Sports Illustrated. And Peter King does his, his uh, tour every year of all the training camps. And, you know, Peter, Peter knows everyone. If, if, if Peter King doesn't know you, then you aren't anyone in the NFL. And so he said, you know, after spending time at Giants camp and talking to people around the Giants, they're very excited. He just he said, like, draft Wondell Robinson in the last round of your draft and thank me later. They're very excited about Wondell Robinson. Remember, new regime in New York. Uh, they spent a second-round pick on Robinson. He's the one guy that's in that receiving core that was a, you know, hand-picked by Dayball and his staff as well in the entire front office there. So last week, he, his first game back, he had four targets. But, like, I think he, I think he was only out there for, like, for 15 snaps. Like, he got four targets – in 15 snaps, three, three, for 30, so one, thir, three for 37, he scores the touchdown, 
He was targeted on 36% of his routes with a 9.3 average depth of target. You know, Dayball said, you know, we want to get more snaps for him as well. Jacksonville, Seattle, by Houston. That's the next four for the New York Giants who have been a more functional offense than I think anyone gave them credit for. And they've done it without really anyone other than Saquon Barkley. It's been, it's been you know, smoke and mirrors here with, you know, Daniel Bellinger and like, you know, and, you know, all these guys that like, you're just sort of like, who? Wait, yeah. let me, let me look at, let me, you know, I'm trying to remember, you know, wait, who's that guy? Wait, you know, like, so anyway, with, with Galladay out and Tony unavailable and I, yeah, I think Wando Robinson needs to be rostered in a lot more leagues. He's 92% available. Really like his prospects going forward. Yep. There's a lot of people watching or listening right now who are just thinking to themselves, does Peter King know who I am? Oh, he doesn't? No, I'm a, I'm a no one. That's yeah, if you're, yeah. In the, if you're in the NFL, then yeah, absolutely right. I mean, just like real quickly, just to finish up on Wando Robinson. Like, listen, like you've got Richie James and, you know, David Sills. You know, I mean, Darius Slayton's had a couple of moments here, but honestly, like, it's going to be the Wondell Robinson show sooner rather than later in New York. Get on board now. Yeah. Okay, another popular name, and I think it's going to be a popular pickup, is Alec Pierce, who's 61% available. Catches the game-winning touchdown against your Jacksonville Jaguars after a week where he lit up the Broncos because Michael Pittman got the Pat Satan treatment. Yeah, I mean, li- Paris Campbell actually got, you know, had the better game than Pierce in this one. But to your point, three straight games with 12 or more fantasy points for Pierce. It's a good match with the Titans, who allow the second most yards per game to opposing wide receivers. And so uh, Alec Pierce, who is somebody that came into the league with, you know, a lot of hype out of Cincinnati. People really like him uh, as well. I mean, I I will say that Paris Campbell, who's also out there in a bunch of leagues, you know, really interesting with the 11 targets and the touchdown last week, seven for 57. I mean, we don't expect Matt Ryan to throw it like 60 times. He he threw it almost, literally almost threw it 60 times last week. But yes, it's a good matchup with, uh, it is a good matchup against the Tennessee Titans. And Pierce has had more sustained success fantasy-wise than Paris Campbell. But I think both guys for deeper leagues, if you're desperate again, eight top 25 wide receivers out this week, you know, Alec Pierce and Paris Campbell in that order are probably uh, pretty interesting this week. Yeah, Paris Campbell was a second round pick only three years ago. He's got the pedigree. And I think Ryan, who we all thought was done, particularly after that, feels like Russell Wilson and Matt Ryan are like inextricably tied at the hip forever yeah, right? after what they subjected to us on that Thursday night oh, game. But God. Ryan showed an upside uh, against the Jags that I didn't think that he had anymore. And all of a sudden, it makes a lot of people on that offense more viable, like Paris Campbell and Alec Pierce. Uh, let's jump into the next guy who's been something of an afterthought, which is Chase Claypool, who's available in 59% of leagues. He was the wide receiver MVP in that game against the Bucs. Uh, everyone's talking about, obviously, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, but he was the guy. Are you buying into any of the Chase Claypool hype? A, a little bit. 7 for 96 and a touchdown on a 27% target share last week. 16 targets over his past two games. What else has happened over the last two games? No Pat Fryer move yeah. for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so I, I believe as long as Fryer Muth is out, and we will see, worth noting the Steelers play on Monday. Uh, no, I'm sorry, they play Sunday night. So we'll have a little bit of, they play on Sunday night against the Dolphins right here on NBC and Peacock. Of course, I'm a company man, Sunday night. So I do think that if Fryer Muth is out and it feels like he's, you know, he's been in this concussion protocol for a while and it feels like the NFL given all the uh, all the concerns around uh, concussions and the discussions around it, you know, it, it, every team is being super cautious with rushing their players back from the concussion protocol. So uh, under the assumption that Friar Muth misses again this week, Claypool in the middle of the field, especially that's where you attack the Dolphins because their corner play is so good. Uh, yeah, he becomes interesting. He's available in almost 60% of Yahoo leagues. Yeah, still think it's clearly Deontay one, Pickens two, Claypool three. 100% agree. And uh, but, but as long as Friar Booth is out, yep. he is viable. Yep, definitely. Okay, name that I didn't think we were talking about uh, is uh, Tyquan Thornton of the Pats, who got involved in the running game as well uh, as through the air. Uh, against Cleveland. He's available in 98% of leagues. He was 4 for 37 uh, with a touchdown through the air. Got the three carries as well. Uh, any interest in Tyquan Thornton in deep leagues? Yeah, I mean, just because you, you think about Kendrick Bourne, who's dealing with that turf toe, Nelson Aguilar and Bourne have both been rumored to be in trade talks for, uh, for the Patriots. And Thornton, who had a huge preseason, he didn't play a ton of snaps in this one, but obviously uh, getting the two touchdowns, one rushing, one receiving, raises a lot of eyebrows. This offense, like, 
the New England Patriots going into Cleveland and putting up the kind of numbers they did yeah. under Bailey Zappi, you know, don't worry, get Zappi. I, 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 you know, we'll see if Mac Jones makes it back this week, but I wonder if, like, they haven't come out and said, like, oh, Zappi's taking over the job from Jones, because I know they really like Jones, right? But uh, I wonder if they're like, no, no, Mac, take, take your time. No, no, let's make sure you're 100% right. No, I feel good. No, I'm Mac, no, nah, it feels like he's still limping a little bit. Let's, you know, so I just, I just wonder, they, they play the Bears. Not a great matchup on Monday night, uh, you know, uh, for, the, for the Patriots offense. Aesthetically but, as well. Uh, certainly like. aesthetically as well. Uh, so, but I think he's more of a deep league ad. He's not somebody that I would be rushing to start until we know, has the Patriots offense turned the corner and they're going to be more, at least balanced as opposed to pass heavy the way they were against Cleveland. Right, you know, so um, uh, because mostly they've been a run first offense. But uh, but yeah, listen, if he starts again and has a big name, we're going to change the name of the show. Fantasy football is happy hour. Oh, it's bad. That's real bad. OK, I do think that with I, uh, I just think that with the way that they're running the ball, with the run blocking, how Ramondre Stevenson is playing, I just even when Mac Jones comes back, I don't think that they can support three wide receivers to be mm. fantasy relevant. And you want Jacoby Myers. Devontae Parker's coming on a little bit. Signs of life from Devontae yeah. Parker. So unless one of those two guys goes down, I don't think that Tyquan Thornton is going to be a thing. But certainly if one of them does, then he has some upside. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know, autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.